Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So many of my friends were asking me about my journey of my 12th standard and how I achieved 91% in my 12th boards. So here am I with a new video of my journey of how I achieved 91% in my 12th HSC boards. <music> subjects maths physics and chemistry i scored 100 out of 100 in my maths exam without sticking a 500 rupees note in my answer sheet yeah. and 98 and 80 in physics and chemistry respectively so now let's get started with our main content so starting with the most important point of this journey is your mental health so basically you should set realistic goals. Setting unrealistic goals may lead to anxiety and depression. I would suggest you to make a structured study plan, prioritize self-care, manage stress and anxiety and embrace your mindfulness and relaxation. See, staying positive and maintaining self-compassion are the most important things in this journey. You should always remind yourself to take breaks and maintain a balance between your studies and your health care. So speaking upon the terms of motivation and inspiration, as I told you early that if you dream of it and you really wish it desperately of your success and your passion, I don't think you have to wait for motivation and inspiration in your life. So lastly, if you really want to enjoy this beautiful journey of standard 12 and embrace your inner dream and achieve what you have dreamed for, I think the most important points in this journey will be self-belief focus and consistency so many of my friends ask me that where to start with so see i would suggest you to start with that simple and uh, short concepts in your textbook many of us start with that first most lesson in our textbook and just go until it is not finished so I personally have experienced that if I start that particular first lesson in my uh, textbook and just go along with it until it is finished, it consumes a lot of time in studying that. So better than that, I would refer and advise you to start with that short concepts in your textbook, clear them firstly and then solve as many as questions you can solve based on that concept. This will help you to gain huge confidence and self-belief that yes, I have started it with the right path and then you can move on with your further journey. Many of us are full of energy and spirit and motivation at the starting of our journey, like any journey I would say. But I would suggest you that if you go step by step in a particular journey, uh, I guarantee you that you will have that same consistency and spirit and energy along with that whole motivation uh, throughout your whole journey. And speaking of going step by step throughout this journey, I started with chemistry subject. I started with solid state. So though it was the first chapter in our textbook, I thought it was super easy for me at the initial state to start with. I started with simple cubic, body centered cube and face centered cube. Then learn all the coordination numbers and the relations between the edge length and radius. Then I will suggest you to go through the solid examples first and then the exercise numericals. The numericals really help you to gain a huge confidence in yourself. Now speaking further of physics and maths, I would suggest you to clear all the derivations and definitions in physics and of maths yes the most important formulas if your formulas are clear you can solve any type of sum in maths so while preparing for my 12th boards i was also preparing simultaneously for my mht cet exam so yes many of you will be preparing for mht cet je or nda like exams uh, yes, it is a little hard to cope up with the two of them and the main difference is that here in the competitive exams it is more likely to be uh, MCQ based questions and here it is theory based in our boards. 
so i would suggest that if your main core concept is clear you will never have any problem in solving mcqs based on it but yes mcqs take a very much extra efforts to solve but yes if you keep going through a textbook thoroughly throughout the whole year it wouldn't be that difficult to cope up with your competitive exam and the boards so now speaking of one particular subjects let's speak of physics i have made three sections of all the chapters included in our syllabus in the first section i have included the chapters that are quite easy uh, compared to the other chapters and take less amount of time in studying them going to the second section i have included chapters that are of moderate level they take moderate amount of time and quite require a more amount of hard work in studying them then going to the third section this is the most important section in physics these are the most important chapters which which also have high weightage and also required more amount of time in studying them so moving on further with the next subject that is chemistry so in chemistry i have made four sections of all the chapters in your syllabus the first section is named as physical chemistry second is inorganic chemistry third as organic chemistry and fourth as applied chemistry so in a uh, first section that is the physical chemistry the most important points are the formulas the relations and also the numericals along with it most important are the definitions and diagrams like specifically if we say electrochemistry the fifth chapter in our syllabus contains most number of diagrams so you should practice the diagrams thoroughly then moving on to the second section that is the inorganic chemistry it is mostly based on theory so i would suggest you to read that chapters uh, thoroughly and uh, as much as you can learn the important points in that chapters it would be better for you to answer the questions in exams because in exams the most of the questions asked on that chapters are textbook based and same to same in what is given in the textbook so yes reading is very important in in organic chemistry moving further organic chemistry we all know most important are the reactions mostly the name reactions you should practice them thoroughly in your uh, day to day study life and you should make a time table of studying in organic chemistry uh, as per as their chapters that are given in your textbook uh, moving further i think the applied chemistry is the most simple part in your syllabus you just have to read it thoroughly and uh, learn some techniques are given in the last chapter so overall in studying physics and chemistry i would suggest you to follow the 4d technique by mahesh kenjore sir i followed him throughout my whole year for physics and chemistry i loved his teaching so what is the 4d technique 4d stands for definitions distinguish diagrams and derivatives so practicing this four terms will also help you to cover your most of the paper in your exams along with that the most important point in studying physics and chemistry are the laws laws are most important in studying the both subjects along with it if your concept is clear you can write the brief answers on your own with the right wordings moving towards the next and my favorite part math as i told you earlier i scored 100 on 100 in my math exam how was that possible yes that was possible because of my question solving technique and my practice so how did i study maths so basically in maths we have two sections maths 1 and maths 2 so in maths 1 likely the subjects are logic matrices and the imagination part that is the vector and line and plane so your your imagination power and your question solving power helps you to deal with this subject but if we turn towards maths 2 the more part is likely to be calculus so in calculus it's not only about practicing questions but it's about practicing different types of questions with different perspective in them so speaking about the calculus parts let's say the derivatives and integration 
I would suggest you to learn all the formulas thoroughly and by heart because the formulas are the ones that help you in solving your questions in less amount of time. So here in calculus, I would like to suggest you my 3R technique which I followed throughout the year. What does it mean by 3R? 3R stands for rewrite, recite and relearn. So what is rewrite? Rewrite means writing all the formulas again and again on daily basis. This helps you to learn all the formulas thoroughly and by heart. What's recite? Recite means revising and going through all the formulas you have learned so far. In your free time, you can just revise and go through that formulas you have learned so that there is less chance of you forgetting them. So now coming towards the next and the most important thing, relearn. What is relearn? So relearning is not just that you have to learn a one particular thing again and again, but learning and understanding it throughout different perspectives. So for me, relearning was understanding the implementation of formulas in different methods. So whenever I used to solve practice questions, maybe from my textbook or another reference book, I used to come along some sums that would be twisted or more likely I would say they needed a different method of implementation of formulas. So this method of implementing formulas in different methods or relearning can be improved by solving as much as more practice problems you solve throughout your preparation. So my dear friends, in a specific point in this journey, you will just think of giving it all up and you will be full of anxiety and you will be like Also, someone has said it already Never give up, never surrender Okay, apart from jokes, I would like to tell that never give up Even if you feel like this is the end, but never give up Because every one of us has Happy endings और अगर और अगर ठीक ना तो वो दी एंड नहीं है दोस्तों पिक्चर अभी बाकी है सो फर्स्टली आई रेफर्ड आर ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड टेक्स्ट बुक्स फ्रॉम महाराष्ट्र बोर्ड देन आई रेफर्ड टू बुक्स फ्रॉम टारगेट पब्लिकेशंस then Uttam Publications books helped me a lot in my preparations. They consist of uh, PYQ board papers and also they have this bunch of questions at the last of their uh, book. That helped me a lot in preparing for my physics and chemistry exams. And at the last when my boards were near, I preferred Navneet 21 set for HSC board exams. That also helped me to go thoroughly through the PYQs. Besides that, I also followed Sayadri tutorials throughout my whole year preparation. So I thank Mahesh sir and all my teachers from Sayadri tutorials for being with me and supporting me through all my journey. So speaking of notes, many of my junior friends asked me for my notes after I finished my 12th standard. But I was like... <laughs> Because personally, I think that rather than referring someone other's notes, it is always better to have your self-written notes that you have studied in your preparation. Because self-notes are just way better than any other notes that I have referred in my whole journey. I would suggest you to have self-notes for each and every concept and each and every topic in your studies because they help a lot in our preparation. Anything done by our own selves is way better than being reliant on someone other's things. So my dear friends, at last but not the least, I am going to tell you that never give up on your passion. Always follow your passion no matter what. Because even if I was preparing for my boards along with my MHTCT, I never gave up on my passion. I always followed it. I followed doing dance and all my other extracurricular activities, maintaining it with my studies. <laughs>